Hey everybody, it's the Walker. So what are we doing today? Well today we're doing a field use review of the Luminite Mini and Mini R headlamp. This is going to be fun. Stay tuned. Here's a field use review of the Luminite Mini R and Mini headlamp. First, let's go over the UI. This is a pretty simple one. You click and hold, puts you into a Firefly mode. You click and hold again, we'll then cycle through the remaining modes, which is low, medium, high. We'll stop at medium. You double click, put you in a turbo mode. You double click, put you back in the last mode used. Click off, click on, put you in the last mode used. Click and hold will put you in the moonlight mode. Click off, click and hold. You keep holding, now puts you in an electronic lockout mode. See that? Now I have to click and hold for a while. I think it's like two seconds before it'll go back on. Also, lockout manually. That's it. This is like a really simple UI and both lights. Whoop, you know, I slick, whoop, locked out. There we go. Both lights have the same simple UI. But what are the differences? This is the R model. The R model, as you can see, has a little bit different um, tail cap. So let me show you that really quick, what it does. Regular model, comes with a standard, whoop, which I promptly dropped, CR123 battery. However, it can also use a lithium ion battery which comes off the charger at 4.2 volts. The entire voltage range is 2 to 4.2 volts, which means if you're going to use lithium ion batteries, please use a protected battery so you don't over discharge it. There's a little indicator right there which shows the proper way, the proper polarity, although it's polarity protected, I found that out because several times I put it in the wrong polarity. If you can see, there's a little like, like the, the spring is there along with like some kind of stopper thing. So the spring is on the board with like a stopper, like a rubber stopper. I think that's nice because it'll keep impacts, my theory, down on the board. You won't, won't, the battery won't slam directly into the board. At least that's what I think by just looking at the fact that the spring is right there with that looks like a rubber or plastic stopper. So, makes the battery goes right in. Threads are kind of nice, and of course there's an O-ring. This is lithium ion battery. So, that's basically, so it's kind of nice that it'll run regular lithium ion batteries and also CR123s. These are Surefire. One thing I enjoyed about this, is the way if you watch it, and they both do it, see how they, the light kind of like then goes when you go to the turbo? It kind of like ramps up then ramps back down. So that was kind of neat and does that in turbo. So it's cool. Also like the way it has nice grippy for easy gripping when changing the battery. So the difference is going over to the R model. Now that one came with the CR123 primary but this one comes with a, with a uh, CR123 rechargeable lithium-ion battery. 
this is a proprietary battery. Um, so if you want an extra one, you have to order an extra one. You can't, it won't, you can't charge, at least to my knowledge, a regular C, a regular um, RC, not in my ear, RC123, uh, or I think it's 16340 lithium ion battery. And is that a black helicopter? <sighs> They're everywhere. So you want to use their, pri their uh, proprietary battery when you go to when you go to actually charge it using the USB magnetic charger which you get with it here it is this is pretty cool I really like this is awesome in field use this is really awesome I'll show you how that works here's a field charger but any power bank would work okay Let's see if I can show you this here and wham I'm not sure if you can see this, but it is turned, um, there's no way, I don't know if you'll ever be able to see that. With the sun glaring, but basically, let's see here, it's turned red. So that means it's charging. When it's done charging, it turns green. So that's kind of nice. I mean, it's a really nice, easy um, charging system. And the R model can also use regular lithium ion batteries or regular CR123 batteries. Put the cap back on. I think we'll just let this thing charge. That is nice and easy. I'm going to show you some of the um, things I really like about this light. First, it really looked like it's quality. I mean, it has a, um, a looks like a stainless steel support on it. The light comes off, but didn't actually come off like when I was using it. I was running it did all sorts of things, but we'll get into that. So the light comes out if you want to use it, if you want to pocket it, and then it snaps right back in. But... It's not going anywhere. So that's kind of nice. The headband is actually wider than pretty much um, any other headlamp I own. Take a look how wide that is. And look at the size of these buckles. These are like really big, big buckles. Now this is a company, I believe they're in Finland. And I think the people who use these, I think they're used to using gloves and doing a lot of activity outside where you have to like manipulate it under less than ideal conditions. Because this is really easy. It's even got like a little, it's like more grippy there. So this is like twice the size of any buckles I've had in any headlamp. And this band is like big. It's like really, really, really comfortable. Let me show you. Look at that. It's the most comfortable headlamp I own. And the adjustment on it, maybe just made it tighter, just made it looser. I mean, it's really easy to work on the fly. So that was kind of cool. I like that. I don't know if you can tell here. The button, they did something to make the button kind of light up when it's in use, but I think it's actually using the light from the main LED to illuminate the button. It's probably hard to see. But it's got a little light there. Also, if you take a look at the optic. This is very different. Um, the company has another model. It's a 18650. We'll be reviewing that as well. Uh, headlamp. And this optic is very different. That optic is more flood. This one, it's a lot more, there's a lot more spot to it. So it throws really far. Uh, there's pros and cons to that, which I found out in actual field use. The pro is I can get a lot, I can use the lower modes more. I can use the low and the medium mode for just about everything because there's not a lot of light wasted on illuminating the, pro the all around me. Just I have like a beam where I can see stuff. Also, there's a little bit of cast the light around the beam as well. The con is if I had unlimited power, meaning I've had like piles of batteries, I prefer a floodier beam. I think when the manufacturer made this, their, their idea was the CR123 or the... Um, the rechargeable one six, I think it's three four zero or something like that. I don't. I'll put the numbers up. But um, 
there's less energy than a 18650. So if you, you're dealing with less power, you want to get maximum use out of the lower end. Like I can use the Lomo, which I believe is like 10 lumens. I can use that for edge tools. And a lot of our headlamps, I'm kind of like weary. I want to bump it up beyond 10 lumens if I'm using like a saw or like an ax. This one, I was able to do it a lot with this mode. It also was great when I was running. So, anything else? Because it's kind of a simple headlamp in, in that there's not a lot of crazy like flashy disco modes or things like that. I bet you I've gone over pretty much most of it. No, I'm not charging anymore. They're both about the same size. This one, the R, the R model, some horrible thing on my neck. There's always something on my neck. That uh, the R model is a little bit bigger because it has the magnetic um, USB charging. Look at that. If I had to get one, I'd probably go with the R model because the USB charging thing was really effective. And a lithium ion battery has like 500 cycles in it. And that's a long, long time. It's kind of like, you know, it would go for years of normal use without the battery having to be changed. So it's kind of nice having you came with a battery that you can recharge. Of course, you get less runtime with a um, lithium ion RC123 or 16340. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. You, you have less runtime than a, than a CR123 primary. So, yeah, put that in consideration. But you can also use a CR123 primary with it. So, what we'll do is we'll put up all the numbers for the um, run times and the lumens. And now we're going to go on to the field testing part of the review, which is always my funnest. Now what we did, uh, I did um, these headlamps, I did the water test, something special. What we did for the water test is that we went on two separate outings. Well, I've taken on many outings, but I, I did the video on two separate outings. One outing involved a eight mile hike and run through horrifically bad weather. Pouring rain, wind, the whole nine yards. And we did dunk tests and everything like that. And I used for, I used eight miles for the um, mini I mean, I used four miles for the Mini, and then I took their larger compass model, and I came back the additional four miles. So, I actually got two, uh, two water tests done for the same outing, but you'll see it passed really good. Really good, the water test, and I always like that. And this time we had the extra benefit of rain and stuff pounding down along with um, flooded conditions to dunk the headlamp in. And uh, the other test is just basic, um, Rob through the woods six miles running and going through seeing rivers and fish and stuff like that so it's loads of fun all right so stay tuned for the um field use part of the review of the luminite mini and mini r and as always if you don't get a chance to see the uh fun field part field testing part of the review uh hit the subscribe button give me a thumbs up and y'all have a great day We're out night running with the Compass Mini R. Awful conditions, just awful. We're gonna do the water test. Bad flooding. I'm gonna find a place to dunk this. I think right here is a good spot. Maybe right here. All right, we'll do it here.
that's good. No problem, we got some miles to go. Awful weather, just awful. Whoa. Very good beam for the uh, for the rain. This um, little more concentrated throw, excellent in the rain. Excellent. You know, watch stuff like this. That rock gives way. It's awful slippery out here. And if we can get rain like this coming through, everything is flooded. Man! Look at that! Crazy night, crazy night out here. For this part of the field testing, we're gonna take the uh, Compass Mini R through a six mile conditioning hike on one of my trails that I use for training. It's gonna be fun. Now I'll show you the beam. Click and hold. That's the uh, moonlight mode. Click and hold again. There's the low. There is the medium. The high. Wow, the turbo, which is really, really bright. Very bright. Double click. Back to the previous mode. And we'll drop it back to low. Let's pick it up a little bit. I can definitely run pretty good with this uh, medium mode. Because I can see things pretty far in front of me and not trip. Like a stick like this, for instance, it doesn't look like much, you know? But, man, little things like that will just take you down. Same thing with like stuff like this. Rocks like that, they don't look like much, but more often than not, it's stuff like that that makes a trip. Not like the big obvious things. Because well, you tend to see the big obvious things and you tend to avoid them. So the beam's doing a good job at that. What do we got here? Like this is a big obvious thing. You know what we're gonna do? We're flying right over that. When you wanna do um, six miles at night, sometimes you wanna hustle. Let's see what we got here. We've already done the water test, so we don't have to do that. Now for the trout test. Hey, there's a trout. Oh, I love that. I hope, hope everybody saw that trout. That's the trout test. 
Actually, I made up the trot test, but this is actually something I do. It's a good trout spotter. Nice little little brookies. See a little brookie? Okay, so I know if I want to come back here with my Tenkara rod, there's some uh, trout under that rock. I hope everybody got to see that, because that's always kind of a neat thing I like to do at night. Excellent trout spotter. Where's the trout down there? Very good at spotting trail markers. Drop it back from this turbo. Stuff like this mud, walk flying to that, you'll slip. So we're gonna walk past this. We'll speed it up right here. We're not going to hit this. Here's something I know about on this trail, but of course, if I can't see it, I wouldn't know about it. There we are turbo, and we are going to go around this. Excellent job! Look at that. Beam. Wow. That's phenomenal. Utterly phenomenal. Huh. Three went down here. Ain't trout in there? Oh, there are trout in there. See that? No, that, that's is that a tree. Yeah, it is a little trout. Oh, this is fun. Oh, there's one right there. Man, the tree went down right here. Let's see what else we can see. There's the uh, danger right there. Let's see if we can see this on uh, on the Look that we can actually see that just fine on the low mode too. It's like 10 lumens, but that's no problem. We got that. We totally got that. It's that that low mode. Yeah, we can see that. Oh, look at this. Uh -huh. Let's go past this quick. Something like that. I wouldn't want to hang under. Good use for the turbo mode, too. Keep going. Whoa! Look at that! It's like a sunfish, see that? Wow, that was neat! I don't, I've never seen this before. Like a sunfish on a rock. 
Oh, there it goes. Whoa! <laughs> See that? That was weird. Never in my life have I ever seen a sunfish literally on a rock. We are out of the woods. And that concludes the um, field testing and um, this review of the Compass Mini and Compass Mini R. As always, thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and y'all have a great night.